So this is probably my last video on the Curta calculator. It's turned out very nicely. Marcus did a fantastic job of recreating this in a 3D printable format. If you do want to see more of this and uh, see it working then leave a comment. In this uh, video we'll just do a very simple calculation, just a simple addition. I still have some work to do on this, there are things that I need to uh, modify and uh, improve. That's not to say I'm criticising what Marcus did, but for my personal preference there's a few minor changes I want to make. The, ver the first one I've mentioned already, and that is the issue with the reversing lever. So this lever that reverses the operation of the counter. Um, the lever wasn't going into the right place, so I've made up a replacement shaft. This is a spare one I made, I've printed two, and this is just so I could show you the difference. So this is the original, and hopefully you can see that the dimples on the one on the left are in a different place, and that puts the reversing lever into the correct location for this calculator. Still can't get to the bottom of why the one on the right uh, is different. I've checked the calculator several times and I can't find any other errors, so I'm not sure uh, what's going on there. But this one works perfectly and um, I've already fitted uh, one of these to my calculator. The other change I want to make, I'll just move the camera so I can explain this a bit better. So when we put the calculator into subtraction mode, we just pull the crank up, we can see the red band appear and that puts the calculator into subtraction mode. Um, but as you can see, when I let go of this, it drops back down a little bit. It's not very fast, it's just like about uh, two or three millimeters, but it's enough so that you can't turn the crank because the gating at the bottom of the main shaft prevents it. You can turn it if you pull it up. Um, it's a bit of a, uh, a pain and it's um, obviously not quite right. Now I'll just show you what's causing this and what I've done about it. I haven't fitted the replacement part of this yet but I have made it. It does require dismantling the entire calculator to swap it but uh, I'll just get this out of the way and I'll show what the uh, problem is. If you've been watching this video series from the start you may recall that one of the first components we fitted was this and this is the spring that is supposed to locate the step drum relative to the TENS bell and hold it in position when you raise or lower the crank. And I'll just show how this works. It screws into the bottom of this. I'll get this screwed in and I'll show you the problem. So the spring screws into the bottom of the TENS bell and it's held in place with a couple of screws that hopefully you can see down in there. Now this engages with the step drum. Now normally there's a shaft that comes out of the top of this, but uh, this was a prototype, so I didn't print the entire shaft. But this would normally sit like this, and the two prongs of the spring go through these two holes. The whole sides are kind of tapered, so it allows this to slide in. And the idea of the spring is it's supposed to positively locate the step drum in one of two locations. A bit like the um, carry lever springs are supposed to put the carry levers into one or two locations. Now you have the position where the step drum is lowered, that's the addition mode when it sits like this, and then you have the subtraction mode where we raise, this sits this way up, where we raise the step drum, that's when we pull the crank up, and when we pull the crank up that spring should pull the uh, step drum upwards, but as you can see we're getting this drop down should sit right up against the step drum like this but when I release it you can see it drops down and that's exactly what we're seeing from the crank. I would also say this spring I've already modified it slightly not on the one that's in the machine but this particular one it's hard to see but um, I've made it slightly stiffer to see if that would fix the problem but that's not what the problem is I'll take the spring back out and show you what um, the problem is and what I've done about it. So this is the spring and I've already modified this. You can possibly see that um, it's now wider at the bottom than at the top, so it tapers down. That stiffens it. I thought I'd try that first, but that, uh, as you can see, hasn't resolved the problem. So it's just wider at the bottom with the recess for the head of the screw. Um, but what I ended up doing was making a new version, and it looks very similar, of course. The only difference is it's four millimeters shorter, so hopefully you can see it's not as tall. And what that does, it moves the two slopes down into a, a different position 
and uh, I'll get this fitted and I'll show you the difference in operation and um, how that affects the uh, positioning of the step drum. So that's the new spring fitted to the TENS bell, looks very similar. If we get this fitted now to the step drum, so again it fits in exactly the same way, this goes through here. So in the add position it sits and there's a, about an 8mm gap between the two which is about there and I can feel it kind of pushing the step drum away from the TENS bell which is what it should do and then when I effectively raise the crank it does that and you can see now that it positively pulls the step drum and it's now held in position uh, up against the um, the TENS bell so it's now doing what it should do so if you imagine that this the shaft on this extends through the top and the cranks on the top it would now be held in the up position there's not a lot of force although it looks like I'm putting a lot of force on this it's just because there's no shaft running through so it's a bit uh, difficult to keep them aligned but it doesn't take much force to actually separate them and then it pops down into the lower position and then if I pull the crank back up you can see it pops up where it's supposed to and there's about probably a millimeter of if you like excess pull so it's uh, doing what uh, I want it to so that's my personal preference it's not to say there's anything necessarily wrong with the original um, but I will be fitting this spring um, as soon as I get chance but uh, as I say it does mean completely dismantling the calculator to do that so I'm waiting till I've checked everything else out to see if any other changes are needed before we finish the series just a couple of other small changes and additions I've made let's move the camera so one of the things uh, I wanted to try and avoid as I put so much time and effort into the finish of the machine was marking the uh, paint job around here so when you raise and lower uh, the carriage then obviously it's potentially going to drag on this component and mark it up so what I did was to put a ring of captain tape around the inside of the uh, carriage that so sits up about here the bottom edge of the tape is raised by the amount that the carriage moves and what it does is it makes a very small gap and maintains a very small gap between the inside of the uh, carriage and this component that it's uh, being guided on it's also good at lowering the friction it's not normally used for this but it's uh, quite good for it uh, so that is uh, right around the inside of the carriage and it works extremely well it really brings the friction down uh, when you raise and lower the carriage so um, last thing we'll do is uh, do a calculation see the calculator actually working and uh, that will be it for this series unless you want me to show uh, more with this machine so I still have to paint the clearing handle yet so I've got this arranged so it clips into position and um, we'll push it back out of the way so you can see the dial properly I've also got the decimal point markers uh, in so they've got a, a, a spring and a ball that sits inside them stop them sort of just moving around on their own so to move them you just push them down very slightly and then you can slide them around the groove so they now work quite nicely and the same with the ones at the bottom now at the moment we got a value of uh, 647,270 showing in the results style and the uh, counter ends in a value of 7. So see what we've got on the input dial so this currently is 20,214 so we'll get our trusty calculator and so we've got 647 270 and we're going to add the uh, two numbers together so what did I say this one was 20,214 so we add 20,214 and so we should get 667484 when we turn the crank so we'll turn this around once and the 7 should increment to an 8 we'll turn that around once and we have 667484 so the result is correct and the count has gone up to eight so as you, so as you can see this works reliably we can add repeatedly there's no uh, issues with the calculator spins freely and we can add uh, any size number we want if we bring a much bigger number in we should see 
the number add together we should now get obviously far more decimal places which we do and as you can see all the calories work very well do one more column So that's now all eight columns of the input register being used. And you can see we're now carrying into the non-directly driven uh, columns in the results register. And it does, it does spin very nicely. It's, um, in fact, when it gets towards the end of the travel, it almost completes this on its own. So it's, it's working very well. It, it does feel a little bit like an actual Curta calculator. Now I have tried subtraction and that mean, and that works so I can multiply, divide. The reversing lever does what it's supposed to. It reverses the operation of the counter. Uh, all the individual parts work the way they are supposed to. So the calculator is now pretty much complete. Just a few more uh, minor changes uh, as I've said. I get the text on here um, but it does now look very like an original Curta calculator. Just uh, of course somewhat bigger. What I may do in the future is scale these parts down, put a 0.2 millimeter nozzle in my printer and make one of these that's maybe just 50% bigger than the original uh, which is what um, kind of figured my uh, printer should be able to do. Uh, this weighs around 1.4 kilograms so it's quite a lot of uh, material used to print this um, but um, I'm very pleased with this. It's been a fascinating project and uh, even though I've repaired a lot of mechanical calculators I've learnt a lot doing this and if you want to learn how mechanical calculators work um, I would highly recommend this as a project. Now, if you do build one of these, you don't need to go to all the time and trouble to finish it nicely. If it's just for you and you don't really mind, you can leave the outside surfaces um, just um, printed 3D uh, as they come out of your printer. Um, but I wanted this to look uh, fairly nice, partly because I'm videoing it, but also because I wanted it to look original. So um, that's it for this series. As I said, if you do want to see more of this and you want to see it being put through its paces more, then please let me know. Um, other than that, um, that's it for this uh, project. In the next video, we've got a PDP-8 power supply to look at that blows its fuse, um, but that's it for this series.